Hello. A number of things are going on this evening and they require some sort of comment. Uh, the first thing, about, by the way, uh, the, the reason I got this scarf on is because I'm not terribly well and knocking back cough mixture. But, uh, number one, uh, the issue in Pakistan. Is it possible that America has directly interfered in Pakistan uh, domestic politics? Well, the, the evidence that I've seen may well be um, a forgery, but it doesn't mean that America has not actually been interfering. And more than that, America has a history, has a has a um, has form when it comes to interfering in other countries, not only in um, Pakistan, in Turkey, um, and across Africa, and so on. America, America's hands are not clean from this point of view. The other thing uh, that seems important this evening, uh, quite. Um, uh, and, and by the way, by the way, I put up something a while ago, and and again the trolls have gone wild. So I'm afraid I have been forced to make some sort of response. But um, the other thing that's uh, gone on this evening is um, some stuff coming out about uh, Patriarch Kirill. He's the leader of the Moscow Church, the um, uh, Orthodox Church of. Russia, and he's a particularly foul individual. How do you know? Because of the size of his cufflinks. If he were a churchman, um, given to poverty and chastity and so on, he wouldn't have cufflinks the size of, um, uh, 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 of the crown jewels. He's the second uh, leader in the Orthodox Church whose cufflinks um, draw attention. The other one was a man uh, called Archbishop Christophilus, and I had uh, issues with him in Greece about 20 years ago. Both of these individuals um, fall foul of an issue that was discussed at the end of the 19th century um, by the Orthodox Church as a whole and uh, goes under the name of ethno uh, philetism. That is nationalism. Abhorrent and obsessive nationalism and Kirill has it bad. Um, and, uh, and Christodoulos, indeed. Uh, Christodoulos was, uh, was obsessed with the idea of putting religion on identity cards. It was the fact that religion was on the identity cards in Greece before the uh, Second World War, which made it so easy for um, the Jewish Holocaust to take place and for so many people uh, to be shipped to concentration camps from Thessaloniki and from... Corfu. Now, um, when I was last in Moscow, I was offered the I, I, I was offered the opportunity of moving uh, my department from um, uh, from from English and linguistics to my own subject, uh, my, my the subject I studied in Oxford, which was uh, theology, and I was uh, I, I was asked if I'd become the first professor of theology in my university, and I thought this was quite an interesting idea. Um, but I was then introduced to a man called Father, Father Tikon. And Father Tikon struck me as particularly unpleasant. He turns out, I now discover, to be Mr Putin's confessor. Um, and so he couldn't, he couldn't really be any closer to Patriarch Kirill, who was somebody who I really didn't like anyway. Uh, Father Tikon had made a film, um, which I had a look at, and it left a very nasty taste in my mind, in my, in, in my mouth. It was, uh, it was very much about the nationalist drive of Russia to reform the Orthodox Church and to grind down anything that, um, uh, anything that challenged it. And at the time when I met him, there were rumblings of a schism, of a break between uh, the Orthodox Church of Russia and the Ukraine Church. Indeed, uh, the Ukrainian church had moved over to the Patriarchate of Constantinople and Patriarch Bartholomew uh, had recognised it as an independent church. And more than that, uh, the Greek church, um, Archbishop Hieronymus of Athens and many of the bishops in Greece had just recognised the Ukrainian church as independent. This led to um, a complete break between Russia and the Ukrainian churches. So that, that was the history that was going on at the time. 
and I quietly withdrew and then I got involved in, um, in, in the circle. So the chances of my actually uh, pursuing uh, that link looked fairly unlikely. At the same time, I was also, um, I also met one of the foulest people I think I've met in Russia, who was a man who looked like a toad. Um, he was called Pyotr Tolstoy. And he was, um, uh, he, he tried to um, grab attention by saying that uh, Jews have been desecrating Orthodox churches, which didn't, um, it, that, uh, that didn't go terribly well. It didn't work for him and it wasn't true. Uh, and then he decided uh, to, um, to jump on the anti-gay uh, bandwagon and uh, support Putin's new law about uh, non-traditional lifestyles. And this uh, had a lot, he had a lot of leverage with this. He was in the Duma. Now, um, I just mentioned this finally uh, because uh, YouTube has now banned uh, the Russian broadcast of its, um, uh, of its sessions in the Duma, the Russian parliament. And I think, why not? Because nothing good goes on there that I can see. So one person actually voted against um, the, um, the plan to invade Ukraine and that person has now fled to the Ukraine and is actually fighting um, with Ukraine against the Russian forces. What an incredibly brave man. Anyway, good night and I'll talk to you tomorrow.